Our first lecture in this course is on light switch logic. And this is a course on logic circuits. And what do we mean by that? Well, by circuit, uh, we're going to mean an electrical circuit, a circuit where we have voltages and currents, voltages across various components and currents through those various components. And those components are interconnected to form a circuit. And by logic, well, in a formal uh, philosophy course on logic, this would be an a investigation of various methods for determining whether a statement is true or false. Now, in our case, we're more often interested in whether something is on or off. Now, we could think of on as corresponding to true and off as corresponding to false. Or we could be even more abstract and just talk about a state one or a state zero. One could be on or true, and zero could be off or false. And so the key thing here is that this is a system which is characterized by having a binary state, a state that is one of two values, which could be interpreted to be true or false, or on or off, or one or zero. So the key thing for us is this is a binary system. We're talking about binary arithmetic and algebra. And that would be for us what we mean by, by logic. And a logic circuit would be an electrical circuit that is able to do the, quote, calculations to determine whether something is true or false or on or off or one or zero. So let's start off by a, with a specific example of a logic circuit. So for our circuit, let's have a device over here, which has two terminals. One is labeled plus and the other is minus, and this is going to be a battery. Let's say it's a 12 volt battery, or it could be more generally a, a any kind of voltage source. And then over here, let's have a device that is going to have two possible settings. on and off here. And then this would be a wire that would come down here to a terminal. And then this would be a wire that would come up here to a terminal. And then we have a third device over here. Uh, let's draw it like this. is supposed to represent an old incandescent light bulb. All right, and one terminal goes there, and one of the wires goes out to the side, like so, and now let's wire this thing up. And so we'll have the hot or positive lead of the battery. We'll go over here to this top connection of the light switch. And then the negative terminal, or the cold lead of the battery, come over here. Over like so. And that will connect here to the common, or the ground, 
terminal on the light. And then this lower terminal on the switch will connect over here to the, what would be the positive terminal on the light bulb. Okay, so that is our light switch circuit. And we're going to claim that that performs logic. Let's give the switch a name A. All right, the switch has two states. If I flip it up, it's on. I mean, you can see what that would mean. It would mean it would create a path for current to flow through the switch. If I switch it down here, then there would, it would break that path, and there'd be no switch, a way for the, the current to flow through the switch. And let's call our light bulb Y. And of course, in this case, very, it's very true that uh, Y, a light bulb, can be on or off. If it's on, it shines. If it's off, it doesn't. All right, now let's see about what we could say about the behavior of this light switch circuit. We could make a statement. I'll call this statement one. We could say if A is on, then Y is on. Why would that be true? Well, if we put a into the on position, then current could flow through the switch into the light bulb through uh, the filament of the light bulb and back out through the battery, make a complete circuit, and current would flow and the light bulb would light up. Now, of course, if we switch uh, the switch to off, flip it down to off, now no current can flow through the switch, so no current can flow through the light bulb and we can't connect the circuit into a complete loop, right? So here, the, the red, this red lead here is always hot. It's always at plus 12 volts. The blue lead is always at ground potential, which we could say would be zero volts. And this dashed orange lead, well, that will either be at the high potential if the switch is on, or if it's off, then it would be at the low potential. Okay, so this thing switches either 12 volts or 0 volts. So our statement 1, if A is on, then Y is on. That's certainly true. Uh, we can make another statement, though, about this circuit. Let's call it statement 2. If A is off, then Y is off. That's our statement 2. So certainly if I turn the switch on, off, then there's no longer a path for current to flow through the switch and then through the light bulb and back to the battery. So the light would be off. Now you might think that statement one would be enough to describe the behavior of this circuit because statement two, it seems like, would be kind of redundant, would follow from statement one. If A is on, then Y is on. Well, if that's true, then, then certainly if A is off, then Y has to be off. But you have to be careful, because that's, that is certainly true for this particular circuit. But that statement alone by itself, if A is on, then Y is on, does not imply, just in, in, without the context of a specific circuit, does not imply statement two, that if A is off, then Y is off. And we can verify that by just drawing another circuit, for which that is not the case. So here's another circuit. So... We've got a battery, and we've got a switch over here, and uh, we've got this switch here. Oops, wrong connection, like so. Okay, so there's our switch A. Connections there and there, and then we've got our light bulb. Like so. And there's plus minus, and this is 12 volts again. And now in this case, let's connect the positive lead of the terminal over here to the positive lead of the light bulb and the negative 
uh, terminal of the battery over here to the negative terminal or lead of the light bulb. So here's another circuit. And again, this is switch A and this is light Y. So for this circuit, is statement one true? If A is on, and this would be on, and this would be off. If A is on, then Y is on. That's true. If A is on, then Y is on. But is statement tr two true? If A is off, then Y is off. No, we could switch this, uh, the switch A to off, and A will still be on, because because the switch isn't even part of the circuit. This we'd say this light bulb is hardwired to the battery, so it's always on. So statement statement one is certainly true for this circuit. Oops. Sorry about that. Statement one is true for this circuit. Statement two is false, not true. So let's just say is false. Okay, so statement two definitely does not follow from statement one. It does for this particular circuit, but it's because of the way the circuit behaves. So we actually need both of these statements to describe the behavior of this circuit. All right, what would be the corresponding statement two for this circuit? Statement one that we had before is certainly true. If A is on, then Y is on. But now, instead, we, our new statement two for this would be if A is off, then Y is on, not off. Y is always on in this circuit. So we gotta be very careful about how we describe the behavior of a circuit in terms of logical statements. These are logical statements, if then types of statements. And in fact, we could see that to describe this circuit, this first circuit, let's call this circuit one, and this circuit two, we need both of these statements. If A is on, then Y is on. If A is off, then Y is off. And down here, we need both of the statements. If A is on, Y is on. If A is off, Y is on. Okay, so that's just a, a cautionary tale that we gotta be careful. To, we have, need to have a complete statement, set of statements, really, that describe the behavior of a circuit for all possibilities. Now, statements of this form is if A is on, off and why is on and so on um, get a little wordy for us and when we get very complicated into very complicated circuits uh, you get a lot of a lot of text it's not very convenient it's more convenient for us to make things a little more abstract and to use this idea of instead of talking about on and off or true and false we just talk about one and zero and we have a mathematical description of our logic circuit so we're gonna have what we call logic variables. So in our circuits, we had, we gave a name A to the switch and Y to the light bulb. And now we're gonna turn those into logic variables. A and Y. And these are, can have values of one or zero. They are binary variables. Kind of these two different possible values. Okay, so A equals one, that physically means A is on, right? A is equal to zero, that physically means A is off, and likewise for Y. And now we can give a, a systematic way to give a complete description of the behavior of the circuit is to do this. So for circuit one, we, we make what's called the truth table. We have a column for A, and up here, by the way, we're, we usually think of, in this case, we could think of A as an input. Right? It's a thing that we can 
change, the value of, or we could also call that an independent variable, and y is an output. It's something whose state depends on the values of the inputs. It responds. It's a dependent variable. So we'll put two columns in our truth table, one for A and one for Y, one for the input and one for the output. And then we list all possible values of the inputs. Well, in this case, we just have one input variable, and it can be 0 or it can be 1. And then we list the corresponding values of the outputs. In this case, we have only one output, Y. So for circuit 1, if A is 1, right, if A is on, then Y is on. So if A is 1, then Y is 1. And then statement 2 up here was, if A is off, then Y is off. So if A is 0, Y is 0. Okay, so there is the truth table. And, of course, that truth uh, description there goes back to, you know, the classic idea of, a, of logic being in something is true or false. Uh, but for our purposes, that'll just be ones and zeros. So there's circuit one. How about circuit two? Well, the truth table for circuit two, that's all possible values of the inputs would be zero or one. And for circuit two, we saw that if, if A is on, so if A is 1, Y is on, Y is 1. But also if A is off, if A is 0, Y is on, Y is 1. So in both, for both values of, of A, Y is 1. So there is the truth table that describes circuit 2. And this truth table is a complete description of the circuit because you list all possible values of the binary input variables and the corresponding binary uh, values of the, of the binary output values, the 0, 1 values. So all possible combinations are described, and so every possibility is described by this table, and you can just look up the behavior of the table. Now we can even do better than that in terms of making things a little more compact. We can have now logic equations. Let's see, for circuit 1, notice y is always the same as a. So we could just say that y is equal to a. Right? Just make an algebraic statement. Whatever the value of a is, 0 or 1, right? meaning off or on, y has the same value. Okay? So that we could say this, this circuit 1 here is, is described by y is equal to a. How about circuit 2? Uh, well, here, y is always 1. So we can just say y is equal to 1. And that tells you, because y doesn't depend on a, it tells you that in the actual physical circuit, the way it's wired up, a is not even part of the circuit. You can flick that switch all you want. It doesn't do anything because there's no electrical connections to it. So there is circuit 2. y is equal to 1. So that would be a description of that circuit, and y is equal to a, a description of the first circuit. So these are logic equations that represent uh, the output binary variables in terms of functions of the input binary variables. Now this kind of approach is very convenient because it's very compact, and later we're going to get into circuits that have lots of variables. And so if we were to try to describe those variables using if-then statements, it would get extremely verbose and complicated. It would be much more compact and easy to understand when we use this kind of algebraic approach. And in fact, this kind of idea of using these algebraic for formulations are sometimes called switching algebra. So the switching, meaning based on the behavior of switches, things that are on or off, that tells you that it's binary. And the algebra means statements like this, y is equal to a. And then other types of operation, arithmetic and algebraic operations that we can perform. 
Now, the advantage of this, as we said, then, is it can be much more compact, and we can use the, the techniques of discrete mathematics or binary mathematics to do a lot of manipulations on our on our logic equations to simplify them or to show that they're equivalent to other equations and so on. Uh, the downside is that it's it's rather abstract. So you know we're just having ones and zeros here, and what does it actually mean? Well, that then depends what the actual circuit does. It may be turning on a light, or it could be turning on a motor, or an alarm, or something like that. The actual application is sort of abstracted away from the math. Okay, so it gets a little abstract in that sense, which is good, but on the on the fact that it makes it much more general, and the the algebra that we can apply to it is much more powerful, but it's a little bit uh, abstract, and, and it's not clear physically what's what's going on unless you have a circuit to look at. So this is why in this course we also have a lab where we go and we actually build some of these types of circuits and see how they function and understand what's meant by things like y is equal to a and y is equal to 1. Now suppose we had a circuit that had maybe three switches, three inputs. We label them A, B, and C, and these can each of these can be on or off, or each can be one or zero. And then a single output, maybe it's a light bulb, or an alarm, or something like that. Why? Well then, in general, we should be able to write that Y is equal to a function F of A, B, and C, and this again would be a logic function. How would we describe that logic function? Well, we could do it by just having a truth table that lists all outputs for any combination of the input values, zero and one, or maybe we can do something like this, more, a little more algebraic, where we actually have a mathematical formula for, the, for that, uh, that particular function. Now, a variation of this kinds of logic circuits that come up a lot in applications and that we will study extensively in this course, especially in the later part of it, is called ladder logic. And the reason for this name is, I remember what a ladder looks like. You'd have two uh, pieces of wood or metal, like so, and uh, we will call those the rails. And then between the rails, we put these little crossbars. And these are the things you actually walk on. And those we call the rungs of the ladder. So a ladder logic circuit would be, have this kind of form where you'd have two rails like so, and then between those, you would put various logic circuits. So we might have a circuit that would look like this. That represents a switch, and then this circle here represents some output. So this might be, say, A1, which can be 0 or 1, on or off, uh, off or on, I guess you'd say. And this is Y1. This could be a light bulb or a motor or something like that. And then here we'll put another rung here. And this has switch, say, A2, and then an output Y2, and etc. Now, the reason for this kind of idea of this ladder logic circuit is because this comes up a lot in electrical applications. Uh, in this case, maybe we would have something that would look like this. We'd have Maybe this would be 120 volts. And then what would these be? This might be in your kitchen. Uh, this could be a switch on a blender. So you the switch A1, and when you make that equal to 1, you, you close it, you turn it on, then the blender motor turns on. And then this might be a toaster, etc. Your whole house would look like this. You have these two rails, which would be, say, the, the hot and the ground rails that would be on your electrical outlets. Your electrical outlets have a third 
uh, output, which is like the little like the little mouth relative to the two eyes on the on the output on the bottom. That's just a uh, a ground protection lead. It normally doesn't do anything except in when you have short circuits and stuff. So these would be just the two the two uh, little and uh, on North American circuits the two little slots that would correspond. You know, you'd have a two two slots like this and then a safety. And that would be your your outlet. So your entire house in principle uh, would just consist of these two 120 volt rails and then you would just everything you plug into that into the wall various places in your house would then just be another one of these rungs in this ladder logic circuit and there'd be logic circuits because they'd be on off okay so in this case what would be the the logic equations for this well this one would be very simple y1 is a1 and y2 is equal to a2 okay that's kind of a trivial circuit and your your house circuits are generally pretty trivial they're independent uh, so the the if this is your your toaster your toaster doesn't turn on or off when you turn your blender on or off right but we'll be interested in circuits which are more complicated where the different rungs can interact we can set up things so that the behavior of one of the rungs affects the behavior of other rungs and, th and then these equations don't, aren't so trivial so this comes about in a lot of electrical applications. Like I said, your house looks like this, and industrial processes usually have this kind of form. You've got the, the power supply in, say, the manufacturing plant, and then you've got these different machines or different processes that turn on or off. And now if they were all just like this, with a, each just had a single switch and a single, what we call a coil, and the switches, well, we're going to call those contacts because of the way this usually works in an industrial setting. Um, we generally won't just have a single contact for each coil, but something a little more complicated, and that's why we need some algebra to describe this. So let's kind of get started with that by looking at circuits that are not just simply Y is equal to A, but a little more complicated. We have maybe more than one input, for example. The first thing we look at is called the AND operation. And this is a type of logical operation. Let's draw the circuit. It would correspond to this. So here are your rails. Here is one switch, and here is another switch, and then here is your coil, your output. There is Y, and this switch a and this switch is B. So what is the behavior of this particular circuit? Well we can draw a truth table or write down a truth table. Now in this case notice we don't just have a single input variable we've got two and each can take on a zero or one value. So we could, the total number of possibilities are both could be zero, or A could be zero and B could be one, or A could be one and B could be zero, or both could be one. So there are four possibilities. Two variables, each of which can have two values. So two to the two is four. And what are the corresponding output values? All right, now we gotta look at the circuit. Well, this, is, this one's kind of obvious. To get current to flow through this, both switches have to be closed. So the only time that Y turns on is when both A and B are on. So that's down here. Y will be one when A is one and B is one. And for all other cases, it'll be zero. Now, actually your household circuits look more like this. And in that case, this would be a circuit breaker. And then this would be your switch. And the way that of course functions is usually your circuit breaker is closed. And then you can use your switch to turn things on or off. But if for some reason you get excess current flowing through this, then the breaker pops and goes to the zero state, the off state. And now no longer can you get current to flow through this. Uh, if you want to want to fix that, you got to go out and reset your breaker. Of course, and if then if then you get overcurrent again, it keeps tripping, and then you got to figure out there's something a problem with your toaster or whatever. Okay, so this is. 
an operation that we call the AND operation because we say that Y is on if and only if A is on and B is on. And we express that mathematically like follows, uh, as follows. Y is equal to A, and it looks like the times operation, although we, we will say in logic circuits A and B. We don't say A times B, A and B. Now, why do we use a multiplication symbol? Well, you can look up here. This is actually literally true for this circuit. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times one, 0 is 0. And 1 times 1 is 1. So it's literally true that Y is equal to A times B. But again, we don't say y is equal to a times b, we say y is equal to a and b, because that's what this represents in terms of logic operations. y is true if a is true and b is true. So that's the and operation, very fundamental operation. Now another important operation, fundamental operation, is called the or operation. A circuit that would have this kind of behavior would look like something like the following. So here are your rails, and here's a switch A, and here's a switch B, and here's your coil Y. So what can we say about the behavior of this, this circuit? Uh, how can we get current to flow through the coil Y? Well, Let's just make a truth table here. All possible values for A and B would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. When would Y be on? Well, if switch A is on, then there's a path for current to flow through A and through Y, regardless of whether B is on or off. So if A is on, that's down here, then Y is on. Okay. Now, what if B is on? We close switch B. Now there's a path here for current to flow. Whether A is on or off doesn't matter. You got a path for current to flow. So if if B is on here and here, then Y is on. So all right, so there's all the possibilities. The only time Y is off is if both A and B are open. They're both off. So this is the truth table. And we say, all right? So up here we would say this would be y equals a and b. Down here, we're going to say y equals a or b. If either a or b, or both, are 1, then y is 1. And so that leaves the only case where y is 0 is when a and b are both 0. And we're going to mathematically write this as y equals a or b, and it looks like a plus b, uh, and it's almost equivalent to normal algebraic addition. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, but 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, is not equal to 1. Okay. But let's think about that. What would it mean that, say, a and b are both 1, and then we'd have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Well, that would, if these were both closed, that would mean we'd have one path here and then another path here. We'd have two paths for current to flow through the light bulb. But is your light bulb going to be two times on or twice as on if you have two paths for current to flow? No, you're still going to have the same, let's say, 120 volts across the terminals of the light bulb. You know, half the current may flow through A and half through B, but you're still going to get the same current flowing and the light bulb's still going to be the same brightness. Things aren't going to be twice on if you have two paths for current to flow. So in our logic algebra, we would say that 1 or 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. You could think of it this way. In, in some programming language, in fact, many programming languages use this idea. For logic, you just have 0 and non-zero. So if a plus B is non-zero, in this case 1 plus 1 is 2, well that's equal to 1. 2 is equal to 1 in our logic 
uh, in our logic algebra. It's non-zero. It's on. Something's not twice double on. It's just on or off. So that's why we don't say a plus b, y is equal to a plus b. We say y is equal to a or b. So the plus sign means or for logic algebra, and the multiplication symbol means and. Now we can combine and and or operations, maybe with a circuit like the following. Y, here's a switch A, B, and C. Now we've got three switches, three inputs. Right? These are independent input variables. We can set each of them independently, and then this is the dependent variable. Y is going to be some function of A, B, and C. Now we could just write a truth table. Here's A, B, C, and Y. What are the values, possible values of A, B, and C? Well, they could all be zero. Uh, only C could be one, or B could be one and C zero, or both B and C could be one, or A could be one, the other zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and one, one, one. There are One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possibilities, different combinations of the input variables A, B, and C, right, which would be you've got each can be take a one one of two values, and there are three of them, so you get two to the three, which is equal to eight different possibilities, different rows in your truth table. Now, when is Y going to be on? When is Y going to be one? Well, certainly A has to be closed, or there's no path for current to flow. So if A is ever zero, for sure Y is going to be zero. So everywhere A is zero, Y is zero. Okay, now if A is, is one, A is closed, now Y will be on if either B or C is on. So if either B or C here, 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 these will it'll all be one for that, that, and that. And the only case when A is, is one, that you will get y is equal to zero is if both b and c are open. Both b and c are zero. So it would look like that. This would be the truth table for this circuit. Now you can see we're starting to, even with the three switches here, we're starting to get lots of rows and the truth table starts to get pretty big. Imagine if you had 10 input variables, 10 switches connected in different ways. Well, now you'd have 2 to the 10, right, which is a huge number, more than 1,000. So the truth table starts to become not very convenient. But I can write a very compact description here. Right? If things are in, let's go back, back to what we, sh we showed previously for the AND operation. When we have one switch followed by another, we say these are in series. So series gives you an AND operation. Over here, when you have them side by side, we say they are in parallel. So parallel switches give you an OR operation. So what do we have here? We've got switches B and C, which are in parallel, and then that combination is in series with A. So you're going to get A and B or C. That's the logic equation that describes the behavior of the circuit. And notice we use parentheses because this is not the same as saying A and B or C because that means A and B or C. We use uh, uh, operator precedence rules that are the same that we have in normal algebra. Okay, so we do ands first. <laughs> Let me spell first correctly first. Ands first and then second we do the ors. So in this case, we want to do this OR operation here first and then do the, that an AND of that with A. So we have to put parentheses to show that we do this first, B or C, and then that AND A. And you can figure out, of course, that these are not equal by just 
drawing the truth table. Let's do that. It's just it's a useful exercise. Let's put A, B, and C. That can be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 1. And then over here, we'll put Y equals A and B or C. All right, because it's A and B or C, then it's certainly true if C is 1, then Y is 1. Because anything or 1 is going to be 1. Zero, 0 or 1 is 1. So whenever C is 1, Y is 1. So we have here C, well, every time C is 1, we'll put 1. Okay, And we can already see that this is not the same as this table up here, because here, the second row, Y was 0. Here, the second row, Y is 1. But let's continue to fill out. So the other time, if C is equal to 0, then Y will be 1 if A and B are true. So in the other rows, we've got to look, when is A and B true? Here, here's A and B. A and B is true there. And A and B is true there, and that's already 1. So the rest of the rows would be zeros. So there's the truth table for Y is equal to A and B or C. And that is different than Y is equal to A and quantity B or C. In fact, what would the circuit be that would correspond to Y is equal to A and B or C? The latter logic circuit it would look something like this. A and B right, would be the two switches A and B in series. And then that would be the OR of that with, with C would mean that you would have then in parallel, you would have the switch C, and then this would be the circuit for A and B or C. All right? And it's, it's, it's different than the circuit. It has a different behavior. Okay, and now we could just, you know, you could continue to add more and more switches. And in complicated industrial processes, well, you start to get a situation where maybe your your mixing motor turns on only when there's a very complicated uh, sets of connections between multiple switches. So we have to think about um, that carefully, and we can again we can always describe the circuit by just writing out the truth table, which is just shows all possible uh, combinations of the inputs and the corresponding outputs. Now often. And what we'll start to learn to do in this course is we can look at this and look at the kind of the layout, the topology of the circuit, and figure out when, when things are in series, that's an AND. When they're in parallel, it's an OR. And we can then maybe sometimes by inspection just write down the logic equation instead of having to write down the entire truth table. Now these kind of ladder logic circuits, these will show up a lot in uh, applications in programmable logic controllers or PLCs that we'll study in the latter part of the course. They're so important because they come up a lot in the wiring diagrams that show up in various industrial control systems. And so we'll see why that makes sense then to basically have a type of programming language what we call programmable logic controllers that uses these, this graphical representation. It's because the, the electricians that are wiring the things up, uh, they understand, you know, blueprints and schematics with these kinds of symbols. Whereas if we had like abstract algebraic symbols, they wouldn't understand them so well. Plus, for us as engineers, these are become more intuitive. Right? We, we, we just, like the electricians, we gain a much more intuitive understanding of what's going on by looking at this picture than by necessarily looking at algebraic representations. In industrial applications, where we're, instead of talking about switches, we're usually talking about contacts, there's a very useful idea and that is that we distinguish between what we call normally open and normally closed contacts. And we can 
understand this by looking at our contacts, which are usually in the forms of, of relays, and would operate conceptually something like as follows. Um, so here we will have a place where we can attach a wire, and this will be called the normally closed NC, and this will be called the normally open NO contact. And over here, we've got what we call our common connection. And then here we've got a little arm that's called the armature. And this is going to be connected to a spring. Okay, so you've got a spring here that is always pulling that armature to be up connected to this normally closed contact. But then down here, we've got a little coil of wire, and we can put some voltage on there, maybe zero or five volts, say. And this is a little electromagnet. And so if we energize this coil, now that creates a magnetic field, and this is a magnetic piece of material, and that pulls down on that armature, and if that's strong enough to overcome the spring force, then it causes this thing to come down and to connect to the normally open connection. Okay, so rather than just on or off, we now have a circuit that can connect to the normally closed, terminal or the normally open terminal. So we could represent this, say, as follows. This would be the normally closed, and this would be the normally open, and this would be the common, and this would be, say, A is equal to zero. Now, here, this will be our value of A, the A logic state of the relay. If it's zero, that means we don't put any current through our electromagnet, and so there's no magnetic field pulling the armature down, and so the armature naturally then, because of the spring, stays connected to the normally closed terminal. If A is equal to one, that means we apply, say, five volts, and we have this electromagnet magnet pulling the armature down to be connected to the normally open. So when A is equal to zero, we're connected to the normally closed, and if A is equal to one, then we get connected to the normally open. Now, here's what's useful about this, and a little different than normal switches. If we make our switch by right, being connected one terminal to the, to the common terminal, and the other can be either to the normally closed or normally open. If it's to the normally closed, that means the switch even when it's unenergized, A is equal to zero, will actually conduct current and could turn a light on. And then you have to energize it. You have to set A is equal to one to turn on this electromagnet to actually pull the armature down and then break the circuit. And then it goes, the light bulb, it goes off. Or you could connect the light bulb between the common and the normally open. And then when A is equal to zero, this thing is in its default state of norm, in the normally closed. There's no path for current to flow. And then when you turn it on, A is equal to 1, you energize the electromagnet, and you pull this down, now it makes a path, and now the light bulb can turn on. Right, that would mean, here what we could, we could imagine, two different ways to connect to our switch. We could connect like this, right, and this would be then for the, uh, well, let's, let, let's do it this way. Let's, let's go like this. So this would be, now, for A is equal to zero, we would be connected to the normally closed and the normally open. Here would be where our second wire would be, and so there would be no path from the common to our other wire. So when A is equal to zero, whatever is connected to this would be off. Now, with that, then, we come over here. And then if we energize things, then we actually make a connection. That's for A is equal to 1, which are normally closed and normally open. 
But we could also do the wiring like so. We could put our second wire to the normally closed connection. And now when A is equal to zero, so remember this is A is equal to zero, uh, this electromagnet is not energized, you do have a path for current to flow and the light bulb would be on or the motor or whatever is normally open. And then when you energize it, the thing that's connected to it then would actually turn off. Okay, so it's, it has an inverse operation to a normal switch. And by the way, this kind of switch here, let's just have some terminology. A switch like this, where you can just have the, the little connector is either just hanging out in the air or it can be closed. We call that a single pole, single throw. Single pole because it has just one little um, switchable element. That's the pole. And single throw means there's only one place it can connect. It's either connected or it's not connected. Whereas these kinds of operations where you have two possible outputs, they would look like this. A switch like this would be called a single pole. So again, it has a, a single element that can switch, but it would have a double throw operation. It could be connected up here or connected down there. So that would be a single pole double throw type of switch. So these are more versatile. You can do more things with them. Now, the way we're going to represent these on our circuit diagrams is contacts are going to be represented by just parallel lines like this. And this would be what would, would be the connections where we would connect to, to the uh, or say our light bulb or whatever it is we're operating with this switching device where we would be our secondary connection would be to the normally open contact so that when the relay is de-energized we don't have a path for current to flow so this would be the normally open type of contact and for the normally closed the symbol would be like so we put a little line between there and this would be the normally closed and this represents the fact that the normal state, there is a path for current to conduct through this. And when you energize the relay, then it opens. It has the inverse operation. And this leads to the third logic operation, the not operation. So to motivate this, let's draw a little circuit with a double a single pole double throw switch like so and we're going to connect our coil y to the normally open terminal this is going to be the normally closed right, and this is our switch a So this would be the case when A is equal to zero, when that, that means that relay is not energized, then the switch would be in the little armature would be connecting the common input to the normally closed output. It would look like this, but we're connecting our coil to the normally open output. Right? And so in order to, to get a, uh, the coil to energize, we would need to have the armature to go down here and that would mean we would need to energize the relay A, and we would have this thing then would give us the behavior Y is equal to A. When you energize the relay, you turn A is equal to one, that puts the armature down here and makes a path to turn the coil on. So Y is equal to A. So if we wired our coil instead to the normally closed output, it would look like, the circuit would look like this. Is normally closed and normally open. Now in this case, when A is equal to zero, um, the armature is connected to the normally closed output. But we've wired things up so that in that case, current would flow through 
the relay. And then if you energized the relay, the little electromagnetic coil, that would pull the armature down to the normally open output and would break the circuit. So in this case, we would write y is equal to not a. By that we mean, and, we, and the notation we use is a prime. It means that the truth table, what would be the truth table for y is equal to a? Here's a, here's y, 0, 1, output 0, 1. What's not a? It looks like this. Here's a, here's y, 0, 1. When a is equal to 0, that means that the relay is not energized and the armature is connected to the normally closed output, then a turns on. And then when you energize the relay, a is 1, then you pull this armature down here, you break the circuit. A is equal to 0. In other words, y is the, we could say, the, the inverse of A. It's, it's the other, or you, you toggle the value of A to get what y is. If, if A is 0, y is 1. If A is 1, y is 0. And we say y is equal to A prime or not A. This is the not operation, the inverting of the logic state. True becomes false, false becomes true. On becomes off, off becomes on. Okay, so that's the not operation. And with those three operations, and, or, and not, we can build any so-called combinational logic circuit. And we'll see this as we go through the course. Another way to say that is with the and, or, and not operations, we can write a logic function that describes an arbitrary truth table. Now we can combine the not operation with other types of operations. For example, we could write y equals a or b, and then we could not that whole thing. y is not a or b. And we call this the nor, not or operation. And let's see what that truth table looks like. Here's a. And here's B, and here's Y. And A, can, A and B can be 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, or 1, 1. Well, let's first do A or B, and then we'll do not A or B, which is nor, A nor B. Okay, A or B, right? So the only time that's 0 is when they're both 0. We've already seen that. And then we just invert that. So 1, 0, Zero, zero. So the nor operation, A nor B, would be one only when A and B are both equal to zero. And we could do the same thing with an and, A and B, and then we could invert that. That's called the not and or nand operation. And what would the truth table look like in that case? If A and B and a and B, and then A and B with the not operation applied. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. A and B, right, is equal to 1 only when A and B are both 1. So otherwise it's 0. So there's A and B, and then just invert that. 1, 0, oops, I'm sorry, 1, 1, 1, 0. Replace 0 by 1 and 1 by 0. So that's the NAND operation. That's always equal to 1, except when A and B are both 1. Then it turns off. Now, identities become very important when we're starting to do uh, algebra on complicated type logic functions. And with single variables, so these are one variable identities, we have things like this. A or 0 is equal to A, right? Why, and you can work out what that would be. Why, why would that be the case? Well, if A is equal to 0, 0 or 0, well, that's, that's 0. Not, you don't have anyone involved. There's 0 or 0 is equal to 0. If A is equal to 1, 1 or 0 is equal to 1, right? This is because, so 0 or 0 is equal to 0. And 1 or 0 is equal to 1. So this, this 
is just equal to a. a has got to be 1 for this to be 1, and if a is 0, this is 0. So a or 0 is equal to a. a or a is equal to a. That's pretty easy to see. a has got to be 1 for this to be 1, and then, right, if a is 0, 0 or 0 is equal to 0. And you can say other things like a or 1 is equal to 1. It's always 1, because anything or 1 is always 1. If a is 0, 0 or 1 is equal to 1. A is 1, 1 or 1 is equal to 1, and so on. Um, a times 1, or a and 1, I'm sorry, is equal to a. So this is equal to 1, only if a is equal to 1. Um, and various other types of operations. Are some interesting one is a and not a is always equal to 0. You can't have something, can't be both on and off at the same time. So this is a simple identities that we can use, and they're easy to, to prove using truth tables, and you'll do some of those in the, in the homeworks. Let's look at a relatively simple but very important application in industrial motor control. So, So this is our motor. Now in, in applications, instead of using just abstract variables like A, B, C, Y, etc., we might have the variable might be motor, and this might be stop, and this might be start, and this might be run. So this is an industrial motor control circuit. And let's see, what is what is the logic here? Motor is equal to, well, first of all, to get current to flow through this, notice this is a normally closed circuit. So when the stop is equal to zero, this is in its, its normally closed state, and it conducts. So we would need to have, uh, we don't need stop to be set to 1 for this to run. In fact, stop is equal to 0. This normally conducts. Now, then over here, we've got start and run contacts in parallel. So one of them, or both, has to be equal to 1, has to be on, has to be conducting for current to flow. So this would be then, we would write this as, all right, in parallel, that's the OR operation, start or run. And then in series with stop, so and, stop, but stop is a normally closed contact, so that's not stop. Right? In other words, if stop is equal to 1, that means if we press the stop button, then this normally closed contact becomes open and stops the motor. So we want actually stop to be 0, and then not stop would be 1. So 1 and, so then start or run, all right, one of these has to be engaged, has to be turned on to make the, the motor run. So the way these would usually work is you press the start button, and then current would flow through here and through the, the normally closed stop uh, relay through the motor, and the motor would start to spin up. And then when the motor was spinning sufficiently fast, there would be a, a little centrifugal switch that would then turn on this run contact, and then you could let go of the start button and now current would flow through the run contact. And so the reason for that is uh, it's kind of a safety feature. If you press the start button and the motor starts to make horrible noises or there's something wrong, you just let off the start button and the thing stops. Only when the motor turns up to its normal running speed does this run uh, um, contact conduct, and then you can let off the start contact, and now the run is equal to 1, and then the motor keeps running until you press the stop contact shut things down. So here would be the logic function there. Motor is equal to start or run and not stop. So if I'm not pressing the stop button and the start button or the run button uh, is pressed or the, the contact is engaged, then the motor runs. Let's look at another application. Suppose you've got a stairway. Not a very good stairway. I'll do a little better. 
stairway, something like this. And you've got a light bulb here. And at the bottom of the stairs, you've got a switch A. And at the top, you have a switch B. And you would like to be able to turn the light on or off from either the bottom of the stairs or the top of the stairs. So maybe the light's off. You want to go upstairs. You, you flick switch A and the light turns on. You go up the stairs and then you push on switch B and the light goes off and, and vice versa. And this is the problem of what we call two-way switches. So how could we implement this? Um, well, we could use normally open, normally closed types of switches to get this sort of operation. We could do something like this. We could have here switch, switch A, and this is the normally closed operation. And then over here, switch B, And then here is our light bulb. And this is, say, the normally closed position for switch B. And then you connect those together, and you connect the normally opens together. Okay, so this would be A. A is equal to 0, and B is equal to 0. So if we had this kind of connection, then current would flow through the light bulb, and y would be equal to 1. a is equal to 0, and b is equal to 0, y would be equal to 1. Now, if I, if I did this, let's say I'm at the bottom of the stairs, and I switch a to the 0 position, say the down position or whatever, uh, and b is already in the 0 position, then this would turn the light on. I get to the top of the stairs, and then I switch b to 1, and I switch b down to here, and then the light would turn off. Okay, so then at the top of the stairs, I would do this, and that would be B equals 1, and then Y would be equal to 0. Or the other way I could get the light to come on would be if I had A is equal to 1, so A would switch over to the normally open connection, and then also B was in the one state. So it's connected to the normally open output now. And now you've got a path for current to flow to turn Y is equal to 1. And if you wanted to turn this on, off, I'm sorry, from either the bottom or the top of the stairs, uh, you would just then switch A to 0 or B to 0. But not both, of course because then you'd be back to this picture up here. Okay, so you toggle a, a switch. If, if the light bulb's off, then you toggle, and you're at the bottom of the stairs, you toggle A, either turn it to 1 or 0 from whatever it is. So that would turn the light on, and then when you get to the top stairs, you toggle switch B, and that turns the light off. What is the logic function for the, this type of um, two-way switch operation? We can write Y is equal to, well, let's see, this is, down here, it's A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1. So that would be Y is equal to A and B. Both A and B are, are on. Both A and B are 1. So they're connected through the normally open outputs. What's this up here? Well, that's where A is 0 and B is 0. And you can have either of these operations would give you Y is equal to 1. So we get A and B or not A and not B. So not A is true if A is false. Right? So not A is 1 if A is 0, and not B is 1 if B is 0. So that's here. A is 0 and B is 0, then not A is 1, and not B is 1, and not A and not B is equal to 1. Okay. So this, is, this would be this case here, and that would be that case. You could have either one of those would then turn the lights on. So that would be the logic function for the two-way switch. And if we drew that on a letter diagram, it could look, you could draw it something like this. It would be the A contact and the B contact. And then you've got to have not A, that's the normally 
normally close version and not B. And then the or means those, these two branches are parallel like so. And there you go. This is A and B up here. And this is not A and not B. And then the combination is A and B. And then the parallel is the or operation, not or, not A, and not B. And that's, then your light is equal to that. Okay, so there would be the, the logical layout of the ladder logic circuit that would then implement that. And this would be then the, the physical connections you'd have for the two-way switch. So this kind of operation shows up in a lot of industrial applications, and this would then be the ladder logic, uh, the ladder diagram that would show the ladder logic for that particular operation.